It's exam question time. Woo! Your favourite time, I know. Specifically though, today we're going to be looking at how to answer a 12 mark explain question. The type which appears on every single paper of the 9 to 1 Edexcel GCSE history exam. Just a quick reminder, if you're doing a different exam board, as in, you're not doing Edexcel, then this video will not be of use to you, as the way your exam board want you to answer questions will be different. Anyway, for those of you who are taking Edexcel, here we go. The example I'm going to use will be from the topic Crime and Punishment, but the way to answer the question which I'm going to go through will apply to all 12 mark explain questions, no matter what the topic. So the question we're going to look at is, explain why transportation was used as a punishment in the period circa 1600 to circa 1850. You may use the following in your answer. Prison system, colonization. You must also include information of your own. The first thing we want to think about when answering a question like this is the structure. For an explain question we're going to need three paragraphs, each with a different reason why transportation was used as a punishment. We don't need an introduction or a conclusion for this question, just the three paragraphs. Conveniently, with this type of question, they also provide the topic for two out of the three paragraphs. So we know our first paragraph will be about the prison system, and our second will be about colonisation. We only have to come up with an idea for our third paragraph. So in this case, we could do our third paragraph about rehabilitation. We also need to know how to structure our paragraphs, as having a structure to follow in each paragraph means that so long as we have the right knowledge, we know exactly what we're doing and can write our answer in just the right specific way that the examiner will give us all of the marks. So what structure are we going to use in our paragraphs? Peel. Now, I'm sure you've heard of P, point evidence explain, because let's face it, everyone has. Well, peel is just P with an L on the end. The L meaning link. So it's point evidence explain link. Your final answer therefore should be made up of three peel paragraphs. Now, because we're lazy, and also because we don't have all that much time in the exam, we're going to start each paragraph in pretty much the exact same way. The examiner doesn't care whether or not you answer questions in the same formulaic way. In fact, being formulaic makes it easier for them to mark, because they can pick out where you've ticked a box on the mark scheme more easily. So we're going to start our question like this. One reason for, and we're going to regurgitate a chunk of the question. The use of transportation in the period circa 1600 to circa 1850 is, and then we're going to make our point. Our point is the thing we're trying to say in that paragraph. So for our first paragraph, this will be the prison system, because England did not have a prison system which could cope with the number of people being prosecuted. So now we have a point, it's time to move on to evidence. Our evidence is our spend. Statistics, places, events, names and dates. So let's add some relevant spend. Between 50,000 and 80,000 people are thought to have been transported to North America in the period up to circa 1770. This is because, particularly near the start of the period, many prisons were just secure rooms in gatehouses and were not purpose-built. Obviously, there's no specific spend that you have to use. You've just got to have some and be able to explain how it links to the question. That brings us on to explain. Explain, in this case, means showing how the spend information we just spewed onto the page links to the question. So we could say, consequently, there was not enough space to hold the sheer number being prosecuted, so an alternative solution, transportation, had to be found. The final step in this paragraph is link. Link is linking it back to the question, so essentially you're just repeating your point. Therefore, one reason for the use of transportation is because England did not have a sufficient prison system. And that's our first paragraph done. Now we repeat the process for the second paragraph. A second reason for the use of transportation is because it helped Britain secure its colonies. That's our point. By sending large numbers of British people to colonies, around 160,000 people were transported to Australia, it would help populate the colonies. especially as when freed at the end of their seven-year sentence, most could not afford the journey home, so had to remain, our evidence. This meant that there was a large population of people with English ties helping secure the colony for England. Explanation. Thus, helping to secure colonies is one reason transportation was used in the period circa 1600 to circa 1850. Link. And then we repeat the process again for our third paragraph. 
a reason for the use of transportation is because it offered a chance for rehabilitation. That's our point. In the early 17th century, ideas about rehabilitation for criminals were beginning to emerge. Transportation to North America involved doing tough, manual labour during their sentence, often in the form of clearing trees or farm work. It also took people away from those who may have encouraged them to commit their crime, evidence, and was consequently seen as a chance for a fresh start, explanation. Thus, the chance for rehabilitation is a reason transportation was used in the period circa 1600 to circa 1850. And we've linked it back to the question. And that's the question done. Hopefully you get how it works now. There is one more important thing you should bear in mind, however. And this applies when you're responding to an explain question from the change and continuity study. So that's either crime and punishment, medicine or warfare, depending on which one you do. Some of the questions will talk about changes through time. For instance, explain why the problem of smuggling rose and fell in the period 1700 to 1900. In these questions, make sure you sneak in a reference here and there to things being changes or continuations to show the examiner that you know the topic is a change in continuity study. For instance, this was a change from the previous period. If you want to see what that looks like in a question, you can scroll down into the description where you can find a link to some example answers and also some questions that you can have a go at. Now you have all this wonderful information on how to answer and explain question. I don't think you're going to find it hard to predict what I recommend you do. Yes, indeed. Go away and practice. Go write as many practice answers as you can and give them to your teacher to mark until your teacher is sick of marking questions for you and you're consistently getting most of the marks. That's what I did and I got grade 9, so it must work, even though my teacher probably hates me now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and tell all your friends. If you didn't catch it earlier, then you can find a link to a selection of example answers and also practice questions down in the description. Also, comment down below what question type you want to see me do a video on next. And I'm thinking of doing some live streaming in the run up to exam season, possibly getting some people on to see if they can beat me at Kahoot and answering some questions you have about exams. So if you like that idea, or if you want to come on and face me at Kahoot, let me know down in the comments. We're Sam, yay, holla.